What's up, gentlemen? This is Rising Phoenix Podcast, a podcast about how to rise up after your divorce. I'm your host, Michael Rhodes. Let's get into it. Joining me today is Despina. Uh, Despina, let's just jump right into it, and why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, hi. I'm really happy to be here with you. Uh, my name is Despina Mavrido. I'm from Greece. Uh, I am a lawyer, a mediator, and an author. I actually was a lawyer, and uh, the last four years I'm working more as a mediator for family dispute issues and uh, as an author. I actually I have a passion for uh, writing, and uh, I want to do it as a permanent job. And mm-hmm. this is what I'm trying to do this time. Mm-hmm. And my first book is uh, "Mom, Dad, Can You Hear Me?" It, because it's related actually to my story. Uh, I am a kid of separated parents. And uh, my story inspired me to write a book about in order to help families that are going through divorce. Because uh, in my case, uh, I, my parents took a divorce when I was around 10 years old. Uh, but, um, you know, after the judgment, uh, they continue fighting for many years uh, about parenting issues. So I was in the middle of their fight for uh, five, six years. Mm. And uh, because I was in the middle and I couldn't actually handle it because uh, they were all the time asking me to say certain things to each other. I was hearing accusing each other. Uh, They were fighting constantly. So I decided at some point that uh, I have to pick a side. And I decided that uh, I don't want to see my dad anymore. I thought that this was the best thing to do in order to avoid being uh, in the middle. Mm. Of yeah. course, this cost me my relationship with my dad for uh, almost 20 years. Uh, but the, we reunited recently, three years ago, actually. And of course, when I became an adult, I did a lot of therapy. I worked with myself a lot. I realized many things. And I actually understood really deep in my heart that I never hate him. I never hated him also in the past. And I always want him to be part of my life. And I also understood that in order to move on with my life, I have to make peace with my past. And the most important thing was to make peace with both of my parents. So I decided to forgive both of them for the good and the bad things they did in the past. I have two completely different and separate relationships with both of them. Mm -hmm. And now I have my own family. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The only thing that it's not, you know, I really don't still don't like is the fact that uh, they still cannot be in the same room. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> um, so it, it, your experience motivated you to, to write this book, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I yeah. want to talk, talk a little bit about some of the things in it. Um, and, but I want to hone in on because of your experience, because of the book, I want to hone in on, uh, what is it that a child wants or maybe even needs during this time frame? Because, um, yeah, I know due to pre-interview that we had that you, uh, had this occur and maybe you just said it, uh, when you were 10 and my oldest daughter was 10. So, um, how, how things work is strange. So, um, because of your experience, what, what are some of the things that you wanted to see and didn't during that process when your parents were going through the divorce? Well, uh, the most important for me was the fact that they couldn't, uh, discuss, and they had me in the middle. So I would like them to be more peaceful between them and create a comparing plan and not put me in the middle of the situation. Mm. And I didn't want to see them fighting all the time about when they I will see my dad, when I will see my mom, mm. uh, with whom I will spend the holidays, who will pay for my school, for my lessons, any any kind of lessons I was doing. I mean, money was a big issue and I really hated it 
because all the time the alimony was something very, very important. And um, they never agreed on that. My mom was paying more money for uh, me and my sister. And all the time, this was a very big uh, problem. Mm. And I didn't want to see that. I mean, I believe that the parents should discuss these things apart from the kids. And kids never, they never, they, they should never be in front of them when they discuss about money, when they discuss about the co parent plan. Uh, they should never hear the parents accuse each other. I mean, this is the most difficult thing for the kids because, you know, the parents are the most fundamental people in the life of the kids. So when, uh, for example, they hear mom or the dad accusing the other um, parent that or your mom or your dad is not a good guy or a good girl or a good woman, whatever, this feels really strange for the kids because, you know, for them, mom is the most important uh, thing in their life. Dad is the same and they want them both in their lives. So when they are uh, hearing these things, they don't know how to react. And many times also they are trying to please each parent. For, for these reasons, you will hear many times that they are saying one thing to one parent. They will say a completely different thing to the other parent. Both parents, they believe this is true and they have two completely realities in front of them. So they really don't know what the kid needs. And what the kid needs is to, be, to feel free to say whatever they want and to be able to say to mom that they love the dad or that they are able to say to dad that we love mom. Um, uh, A thought popped into my head. Um, I I know as a child, uh, for me personally, I think for all of us, this rings true. We we, um, frequently feel responsible for anything that our parent says or does or whatever. and, and so I'm, I'm just curious, uh, I, I think I know the answer, but did you have any sense of this is all my fault type of thing uh, when, yes. when you were going through the process? Yes, for many years, I was feeling that this was my fault. Mm-hmm. And uh, also every time they were fighting, I was feeling that this was my fault. Mm-hmm. And for this reason, I was trying to please both of them. And because I was trying not to hurt them, but they were using me as a weapon. So when they were asking me to say certain things to each other, I was trying to change these things just to not make them, just not to hurt them. Mm. But this was creating a big confusion. And uh, it was very difficult because in the end they were fighting and I was feeling guilty about it. Uh, Well, so let's, it's so heartbreaking, honestly. I think, um, there really is no worse thing, and I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are worse things. Uh, you know, I, I I don't live in Ukraine, so I could be thankful yeah. for that. But um, and divorce is really hard. Obviously, it's hard on on the individuals, but I think it's really devastating for the children. Um, it just breaks my heart. Uh, so what? Uh, let's let's shift a little bit um, and and talk about. And I think that the answer might be might be sort of the same. But what are some of the things that you wish they didn't? do um you wanted them to not sort of put you in the middle and uh but but were there other things that you wish they wouldn't have done um sort of maybe separate or different than than um you know what you wish they would have done i wish they would have the same rules in both houses they will uh, Mm -hmm. have the same comparing plan and i also because actually in my story there was a third person in the life of my dad Mm. I wish um, this was handled, they would have uh, handled this thing a little bit differently. Because actually, for the kids, it's not a problem if there is a third person in, the, in their lives. They don't really understand what this means for them. And if uh, you um, accept this person and they see that both of them, they accept this person, for the kid, it will never be a problem. Mm. 
generally, the most important is for the parents to to agree on everything separately from the kid. So as for the kids to be the process a little bit more smooth and more um, easy going for them, because it can uh, it can be done and it can be easy for the kids when the parents are able to communicate. No, I, I agreed. I think I, I wasn't a, a child of divorce, but uh, um, going through it, I know how difficult that is, though, um, to um, to be uh, anything other than angry <laughs> at, at my ex, you know, um, and, and there's a part of me that that pushes back and it's like, you know, you do whatever you want at your house and I'll do what I want at my house. Um, but I can see where that can cause um, some confusion and some, some, some strife with the child. And I, I suppose um, having things the same is more comforting, um, but it's, mm. man, I, I gotta tell you, that's really hard. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, screw that. I'm not doing that. I, I think it's probably the best thing to do. It's the right thing to do. It's just, it's, it's really, really hard. Um, so I want to talk about the, the book a little bit and, and sort of talk about how, how did you approach it in terms of, um, you know, why did you choose it uh, from the perspective of, of a child? Is it for children? Is it for parents? Um, talk a little bit about your, your, your process and your thought process to, to decide to do it. Mm -hmm. Actually, I wanted to help both of them. And for this reason, I believe that it's for both. Uh, also because the language that I'm using and the, the thoughts of the protagonist, who is a 10 years old girl, are the thoughts that I had when I was 10. Yeah. So it's a book for kids and uh, because I wanted to help kids understand that the divorce is not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. They can communicate to their parents what they want because usually the kids are trying to hide their feelings. Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying with the book to help them understand that they can communicate to their parents what they really need from them and the parents eventually will listen and also that they can have both of them in their life because you know after the divorce m many times especially when there is intense conflict uh, the kids are afraid that they will lose one of their parents uh, or when they are hearing at the phone one parent to scream to the other that I will not leave you see the kid. Mm. This is a shock for the kids. So I was trying through the book to make them understand that it is possible to have both of them in their life and they can actually ask for it. Mm. And I, it's also for the parents because actually the specific book is exactly how I saw the divorce when I was 10. My fears, my confusion, my anger. And I wrote in the book all the things that I wanted to say to my parents and I never had the courage to do it when I was young. Mm. Um, uh, as, as it frequently does, things pop in my, my head. Um, I'm just curious about you, you sort of said, uh, you sided with your, your mom for, for years and that, that, because that was, that was easier, right. Um, it was easier than having to be in the middle and, and, and sort of, um, figure out how to translate messages and stuff. So, but, but at a certain point, uh, as you got older, you, you realized that, you know, um, you, you needed or wanted that relationship with your father. And I'm, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. This is just my, my interpretation of, of what you said at, at any point, did you, and I'm not trying to bash your mom, but I'm just curious at any point, did you get mad at your mother for, do you feel like she sort of forced your hand in choosing a side? Do you feel like you lost I, I, out because of her I, I, actions? Yes, I felt uh, angry at some point when I was uh, older and I realized that uh, she didn't help me actually to handle the situation differently. Yeah. But I was angry a little bit with both of them because, you know, both of them are doing some things that are not helping because yeah. they are the parents usually are more concentrated to themselves because their feelings are, are so intense that they can handle them. So, yes, at the beginning, I was more mad with my dad. So I took the decision to go with my mom. After that, I started being mad with my mom. 
uh, when I realized that I was missing my dad and I never hated him and all this. But both of these situations didn't help me to move on. That's why I decided that I have to make peace with both of them. Mm. Because, you know, as you said before, you are angry with your uh, ex and it's easy for you to be angry. Mm-hmm. But for the kids, it's very difficult to hate one of the parents. Or to, when they are angry, actually, there is pain behind all oh, this yeah. anger. Yes. So they don't know how to handle this pain. Yeah. And I didn't know how to handle it. And in the end, I, all this thing was actually uh, creating problems to my life, to my personal life. I couldn't uh, make a relationship that um, have a long uh, duration. I couldn't stay in a job for a long time because I was feeling that uh, they will abandon me. So I was trying to abandon them before yeah. they will abandon me. Yeah. So all, all these things, uh, I think that they would have been different if my parents would have uh, handled differently certain situations. Yeah, I, I want to hone in on that. I want to talk about that as specific as we can, uh, because I'm just curious, um, from your perspective as, as a child that was going through it, would you have liked uh, or, or what was the scenario and what would you have preferred in terms of birthday parties? Did you have joint birthday parties? Do you wish you would have been able to? Um, holidays, vacations, like what would have, what, what did occur for you? It sounds like they couldn't even be in the same room. So it sounds like everything was separate. Would you have preferred a, a, a more um, sort of cohesive uh, scenario or were you able to understand and be okay with, you know, everything is separate now? For me, and yeah. I think for most of the kids, uh, but I will speak for myself because I don't want to, I don't know for every kid, but I believe that the, um, the secret wish of uh, kids that are, their parents are separated is to have, to have them both. Yeah. Uh, I think that it's uh, the secret wish of all this, the, separ- the, the kids that have separate parents. And this was mine for many, many years. I had the I wish I could have them both in one room for the birthdays or when we had something, a celebration at school, because this was really hard for me when uh, I had to invite them both at school. I was so afraid that they will start the fighting in front of my schoolmates and it, this would be embarrassing for me. And I didn't know where to go, you know, because... I had my mom from one side of the room in, in the classroom now. And on the other side, it was my dad. And I was in the middle and I didn't know where to go when the, celeb- when, you know, the celebration was finished and I had to go to see my parents. All the children were going near to their parents. And I had them in two completely different directions and I didn't know where to go. Man, that's, uh, that's heartbreaking. It's tough. Um, and I got a lot of things popping in my head. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. You said you have your own family. Um, yes. you are, are, if you don't mind me asking, are, are you, are you married now? Yes, I'm married. Uh, and, and I think we all know that any relationship, uh, including marriage can be, can be difficult, right? It can be tough. It has its, um, hard moments. Any relationship does, but do you, Knowing what you know, going through what you're going through, and, and again, this is your, you know, your experience, your thoughts. Um, do you think you would ever go through a divorce if of your choosing, or would you do whatever you had to to make it work? So what I'm doing with myself now, in order not to avoid it, because you never know, just to be in peace with myself, is that I'm doing therapy. I'm working with myself a lot because I want to understand and to be in contact with my feelings because I know that everything starts from inside. So what I'm doing also now that I am married and I have started three years ago, I'm uh, working with myself constantly. Yeah, Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome to hear, honestly, Um, because I think I, I wonder and I think that when a child experiences something like this at an, at an early ish age, and I think 10 is early enough. Um, I know for me, not, not through divorce, but just through the trauma of shitty parents. Um, I, I shut down uh, and, and it's reinforced by society because I'm a man. So 
um, shutting down and, and not feeling my feelings was, uh, you know, I, I was a fucking ninja at it. Um, and I think that if you go through this, um, any trauma, but I think divorce for sure, as a child, I, I, I wonder, you know, I suspect that the, the defense is at, at least at some point, or maybe right off the bat, just shutting your feelings down because it's so much to handle. Do you, do you think that's what occurred for you? Yes, this happened to me actually when I was a teenager. I I, I didn't want to cry, and I never cried. And uh, I was telling to everyone that I'm okay. I mean, I don't want to see my dad my, anymore, and that's fine. I am okay. I'm handling it, and I'm a strong woman, and I am near to my mom, and I will do everything for her. And I was trying actually to save my mom. I was trying to take the place of my dad at home, which is crazy. Right. <laughs> I mean, because it was I was just a teenager. Yeah. And uh, it was difficult for me to start have a co- uh, to be in contact with my feelings. For many years, if you were asking me, how do you feel? I didn't know how I feel. Yeah. Um, you, you talked uh, before about forgiveness. Um, it's something I'm dabbling my toes into, uh, as I do think it's maybe a necessary evil. Uh, that's probably the wrong word, but at least that's how that's where my head is at currently. Um, uh, and and I think also forgiveness, uh, it, like like many things in life, needs to have its own personal definition. But but be that as it may, you talked about forgiveness, and I'm curious um, of that journey. Where where when did you start it, and why? Um, and, and are you are you still working on it? Like how how had that like sort of been for you that that sort of forgiveness journey well it took me many years it was not easy at the beginning i was feeling that if i forgave them i will be they will see me as a weak person mm-hmm. because i was thinking that vulnerability is a weakness yeah. But I realized in the process that vulnerability is a strength and not a weakness. Uh, because it's nice to be, it's human. It's, a, it's human to be vulnerable. And in the end, what I realized is that when I forgive them, I, it was me that was feeling better. I don't know about them, but for me, all the burden that I was carrying in my shoulder left and I was feeling free. I was feeling like I was flying. And when I started to have with both of them as a relationship, I was feeling okay with me and there and in contact with myself. Yeah. So it was only for me that uh, the forgiveness helped only me in the end. Also because anger was hurting me in the end. Yeah. <laughs> Not them. <laughs> and how, how long do you I mean how it sounds like you're you're to the other side. How long did that process take for you, do you think? For me, it took at least a decade. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, it, it, as, as daunting or um, negative as that may sound, I actually think it sounds, it gives me hope it, for, for a couple of reasons. One is that you, it's possible. Um, two is that it does take a while and that takes the pressure off for, for me because it's, mm-hmm. it's not like, oh, I did it in two months and I'm going, ah fuck like two months like i i don't even want to look at her let alone forgive her um so it, there's some for me it's in a weird way there's hope in that did you find yourself um getting to the stage like yeah i think i'm good and then you're like ah fuck them and you sort of pull back did you have a lot of that sort of many times many times i was feeling that yes let's do it okay and i, I will call them because actually i called them and i told them that i forgive them and this call was really difficult to do it Mm. Uh, so many times I picked up the phone and then I didn't uh, you know I hung up and said no I will not do it today (laughs) (laughs) it it, it took me some time and you know also now that I have forgiven doesn't mean that I will not be angry again yeah it's something that can come and go, but the most important is that you feel that, I mean, I feel that I left the past behind and I made peace with the past. What happened, happened. And now I, this past, it's my past because for many years also, I, I didn't want to think about the past. I didn't want to think about the years that I was young and what was going on. So I accepted my past and I said, okay, this was me. 
And that's okay. I forgave also of myself because I was feeling guilty for not having a relationship with my dad. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I move on. I've, I forgive them, but I forgive also myself. Yeah. For, because, you know, I was feeling that I made some mistakes also me because, okay, until you are 18 years old, yes, maybe it's your parents' fault. But after that age, some things start to be your fault. It's not, uh, you can't blame for everything your parents. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I want to, um, yeah, and I, and I agree. I think forgiving yourself is a part of it too. I think that's, it, it can be maybe as difficult. Um, Lord knows I made enough mistakes. Um, you know, to, to fill up a book or a podcast. Um, I want to talk about your, let's go back to your book though. I want to talk about, uh, cause we, we talked a bit uh, in a pre-interview about the reception. Um, you know, how, how has it been received? How have you um, dealt with any kind of criticisms? Um, how, how has that experience been for you? Well, uh, my mom didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I didn't even think about that. At the beginning. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, they felt a little bit, uh, you know, they they didn't like the fact that, uh, for all the pain that they Mm -hmm. caused. But uh, when I explained to them my point of view and why I wrote the book, because my main goal is to help other families and other children especially, uh, they accepted it better. (laughs) Uh, the reviews are good. I have many, many good reviews uh, from parents and from children. I have children that told me that they like the fact that Irene is the protagonist, and the, that she had the possibility to actually save the relationship between the parents. And I have many parents that told me that now they understand how their kids feel. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm happy about this because actually this is what I want to make them understand to to get in their kids' shoes. Mm-hmm. I also have negative uh, reviews. I mean, also for for example, I have a review from a person that uh, he didn't like the fact that there is a, a third person in the life of the dad. Mm-hmm. But uh, this depends on how you see it. I mean, for me, I. I put a third person in the book from the beginning, actually. It's uh, the first fight of the parents start with this uh, third person in the life of the dad. And mom uh, asked from the dad to leave home. Mm. Uh, I did this partly because it's my story. And uh, secondly, because uh, I want to make the parents understand that it's not important for the kid, the third person in the life of one of the parents they can actually accept a third person if uh, depends on how the parents will react on this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, if I remember correctly, you talked about the, the, the person that gave the review was uh, thought it was biased against men, I think. Is that, that was his statement? Yes, yes. He, he said that it was against men. And actually, I felt uh, a little bit sorry about that because for me, it's that friendly and I want it to be that friendly because I, uh, I, w- I didn't have my dad when I was young. And I don't want uh, kids to go through something similar because I strongly believe that uh, kids need both parents in their life. Of course, I'm not talking of cases of violence or abuse or or this kind of things. But in case of uh, intense conflict, I believe that uh, both parents need to find a way to communicate because it's crucial for the kids to have them both. And uh, dads are uh, very important in the life of the kids. Well, uh, on that note, um, first I, I want to thank you. This is this is awesome. Um, th- th- really, honestly, thank you for doing it. Um, the the last flesh question I ask everyone, and and we'll get to uh, where we can where we can find the book and everything. Um, uh, and I, I need I need a couple signed copies. So whatever I got to do to get that. Um, <laughs> uh, but I want to ask you the last question, which is, what are some words of wisdom you would impart? to a man who has just started this divorce process that is um, surprised, overwhelmed, and distraught? What are some things you would say to that man? To ask for help. 
and not from a lawyer. I'm not talking about the practical help with the divorce papers and everything. This help is important and necessary, but I'm talking about help from a, a coach, a divorce coach or a therapist or a person that will help them handle their emotions and uh, be in contact with their emotions. Yeah. Because uh, otherwise, they will never be able to sit on the same table with the other part and discuss about a comparative plan. Mm. Yeah, excellent. Excellent words of wisdom. I, I completely agree. Um, where can people find you? Where can people find the book? Um, what's the best way to, to purchase the book? Well, the book is on Amazon. It's uh, in ebook version and paperback also in all Amazon stores and uh, me they can you can find me in Facebook and Instagram uh, as author Despina Mavridu this strange name <laughs> <laughs> written here <laughs> or in the book <laughs> uh, yeah, one more time the title of the book just so uh, in case guys uh, missed it in, uh, in the first go around uh, the title mom dad can you hear me uh, okay great Despina thank you very much for doing this I really really appreciate thank it you. Um, I am going to get some copies as soon as we, we get done recording here. I'm going to figure out how to get some signed ones. Um, <laughs> the, the perks of having a podcast. Uh, but sincerely, thank you for doing this. Thank you for writing the book. And uh, I really appreciate it. And we will definitely have to do it again. Thank you very, very much. And uh, I really would like to have feedback from the people that read the book. Will do. I'll, I'll definitely uh, let the guys know to uh, once they get it to, to reach out. Great. Thank you very, very much. Yep, thank you. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. Thank you to Nick Coyle and Lifer for allowing me to use their song, Born Again, which you're hearing now and at the intro to the podcast. Thank you to Justin Dillahanty and all of my brothers at The Alpha Code. Please visit the website, risingphoenixpodcast.com, to connect with me and other like-minded men who are looking to thrive and grow after the divorce. And remember to surround yourself with people who add value to your life, who challenge you to be greater than you were yesterday, who sprinkle magic into your existence like you do to theirs. Life is not to be done alone. Find your truth. Take care.